What's happening? What's happening with you, man? Best out. Hieroglyphic Souls of Mystic was good. Glad to be here, man. Glad to be here. I've been watching the interviews. I'm a fan of the show. Word, I appreciate you, man. It's it's been fun, and we've had some great guests on, and interviewed a lot of a lot of the crew, and uh, so it's um yeah, it's been good, and so happy to have you on, man. Thanks for joining us. Really appreciate it, man. Yeah, man. I know it's three hours later where you are, so. So I'm good, man. I, yeah. I rock. This this is my my day for the for this shit. I got another show after this with the uh, with a friend of mine saving the hip hop culture. So we just we just rocking. You know what I'm saying? Nice. So we just rocking. So um, this is episode 22 of the Carrying the Culture Show. We got oh yes, yeah. sir. Yes, sir. Souls of mischief. It's in the Netflix. history books. Yeah, Oakland, California. Um, everybody, before we get started couple of ground rules it is a challenge to navigate these shows with people commenting which it's but it's a great feature to have however we're not like it's not about answering the comments for us we're having an interview we're talking we're trying to chop it up the questions feature is below please use it if you want to ask questions but it doesn't mean we'll get to them it's just a, it's a bonus so like if you if you braided festo's hair in third grade like <laughs> he might not really give a shit right now you know what i'm saying like so just, you know, just, just, again, just be mindful of shit. But use the questions feature, please, below. It has a question mark. And then I can post a question. Everybody can see it. Festo can read it. We can all we can all see it. So um, let's get started, yo. Listen, everybody's got a high road story. I mean, I, I've I've interviewed A-plus Tajay. And, you know, the beginning shit is always, it's important, especially for the for the OGs that are, that are, that are still here with us and, and doing shit. And it's important for everybody to understand. So... What's your high road beginning? Because it seems like so A plus and, and, and Tajay were they were rocking out as little like little young and youngins. They, they they did a song for me like that was and they were like eleven years old. When like how did you get into the mix? Because you you were friends with Tajay in middle school or some shit, right? Yeah, well, <clears throat> we we weren't exactly like friends. You know what I'm saying? That's what is a trip. It's like <clears throat> you pass dude in the hallway. You know what I'm mm. saying? And you like. What's up? You know what I'm saying? Oh, okay. Okay. So um I knew him. I know, love how we could, I love I how knew who he was. I was like, that's Tajay. I love yeah. how Wikipedia like adds on to shit. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know, I know. And plus, you know, that's something we always speak on just because that that is like a connection um that dates back pre pre hyro or pre even me being a rap dude really. You know what I'm saying? Like back then I was just a hip hop dude. You know what I'm saying? Like like ah that's Man, that ain't that ain't fucking with the new rock him. You know, I was one of them. I wasn't like, uh, you know, like busting, and they was like fully, fully immersed. You know what I'm oh, saying? Like I didn't, even, I didn't even really know he rapped. You know what I'm saying? I knew he was a hip hop dude. You know, um, but I didn't know he. I didn't even know. We didn't know each other well enough to even know that he was doing music like that. You know what I'm saying? Um, but yeah, I mean, and what's crazy is. He lived not too far from me, too. On top of that, we were, because we went to school in North Oakland. Um, <clears throat> and that's like more towards uh, Berkeley, you know, and like towards San Francisco. But we were both from East Oakland, but we used to just come across town in North Oakland for whatever reason, you know. And uh, <clears throat> come to find out later on that, oh man, you live, you live right over the hill. You know what I mean? It's cra it, was, it was crazy how everything connected when I look back on it. I'm like, and then we found out we all had like the same birthday. You know what I mean? Like, I'm a week apart from Tajay. Our birthday is a week apart. Opio, all the souls in April. Everybody in the souls is all April. We all born in April. We flipped out the first time we found that out. We was like, damn, everybody's born in the same month. You know what I'm saying? That's crazy. And so, and, and then and and it was crazy too. It's like Dell lived um, even closer. And one of my friends that I went to, L who I knew since like preschool, um, he was like, uh, uh, my boy Brandon, <clears throat> he was like, man, it's this dude across the street from me that got every video game. I'm like, he lying. He's like, man, he got every game. Like I go over to his house and he have like all these new games. I'm like, you got these new, you got these new games. He's like, man, nah, my boy Taryn gave these to me. And I'm like, who is this Taryn dude with all the video games? You know what I'm saying? So I knew I knew him just as like 
we didn't really know each other, but I knew he, who he was just based on like he used to have all these video games. <laughs> Wow. And we lived, and we lived, like when I found out where he lived, I'm like, oh, man, he lived right down the street. And then me and Tajay, his, Tajay's god brother is my boy, Jossie. So me and Jossie went to high school together. And he was like, yeah, Tajay is my god brother. And I'm like, Tajay, oh, he went to, you know how it is. Like, you just, you just start connecting the dots. Right, because you know? Oakland's not that, Oakland isn't that big either. So it's like. Nah, it's only, it's only, you know, 400,000, 500,000 people. So, um. It's six degrees of separation between my uncle knows your your you know yeah. your little sister's uh you know babysitter you know all that kind of stuff. No so. doubt, no, no doubt. So then, were you like when you with the Dell video game shit? Like how old were, about how old were you then? Oh, this was like um, this had to be fifth or si fifth or sixth grade, something oh, like that. Shit. <laughs> yeah, but you yeah. didn't. But you but you guys weren't like friends. You just knew who he was. I just, he he lived right across the street from from my boy. That's crazy. Like right across, yeah, so I used to go over. There, I used to. Um, this was my boy who he used to live in Richmond, but then he he hit me up one day like, "Yo, I live. I moved right down the street," and I'm like, "For real?" So I was just like, "This was like we knew each other since kindergarten, growing up." My boy Brandon, and I would go over to his house, and that's how that's how I. That was my segue to like where I knew where Dell lived. Then he told me. They live right over the hill. I'm like, I could, I could walk another ten minutes. I mean, I was already driving. That's that's the that's the thing too. Is like I started driving when I was like fourteen, and so I used to just, I've just spent over, you know, my older brother would like, be like, hey, take the rental. I would just leave the house and spin down, you know. I wouldn't go too far. I just spin down to that right right down the street. So it seemed. We live. If if I showed you like the de the geography of it, you would be like, "That's not cl super close." You know what I'm saying? But to us in East Oakland, where we live, everything was spread out. Right. So everybody kind of knew each other. Right. Right. So so you didn't find out then until later. Did you? When did you connect the dots that that Dell was Dell from fifth grade video games? Like, I mean, did you like, or did you did you still did you fuck with him and like? Like throughout the music shit, or like, cause you, I mean, so like, when did you like make that connection? Um, I want to say it had to be like, so me in ninth grade, that's when I met Jossie uh, Tajay's god brother, and then from there we just start kicking it. You know what I'm saying? Like all of us start kicking it, but then, but I still didn't even really know that he was affiliated with Dell at all, um, or Casual. As a matter of fact, he took me to Casual's house before he took me to, um, before we went over to Dell's house. And uh, and I just and I knew plus because I knew A. Plea because he um, that was Tajay like best friend. So as soon as I started hanging, as soon as we clicked up, then it was just like naturally he started coming around, and then they they uh, they introduced me to Opio. But I had they introduced me to Casual before I like I was going over to Cas's house around. This is like tenth grade, ninth tenth grade. We started hanging out a little bit, and I was just. But it was the the segue to everybody was basically through through high school and knowing, and then, you know, and then through Tyler James, who I knew before high school, so. And when did you, and so, like, for you, though, personally, when did you start, like, rhyming seriously? Because you said you were, they were already doing it. I mean, because they, they played a song, well, yeah. they spit a song for me that they did when they were 10 or 11. Uh, oh, man, I'm Tyler glad Day. I wasn't recorded back and, then. <laughs> right, right. They, they recorded. It was like it was called Perpetrators. I don't know if you ever heard that. You heard that shit. Of course, of course. Yeah. Of course. So, Perpetrators. Of course. The ones we when hate. I when we first started kicking it, they already had full song. Like they already had. It would be like it wouldn't be every member on there. They wasn't like we the souls of mischief when we got these songs. They just had like cats was just doing songs. You know what I'm saying? And uh, one song they had, I remember it was to. Uh, it was that Herbie Hancock that boop, 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 that, that with, the, with, the, with the, I can't remember the name of it. I don't know the name of it. But it's from his Headhunters, that. actually. It's a Headhunter song. But, um, and it was just, it was just rocking. I was like, man, these cats is, like, they fully, you know what I mean? Understand how to structure a song. And make a song. And it sounded like something that was out at the time. You know what I'm saying? It didn't sound like it was, a demo or or anything like that, you know what I mean? So, um, 
that was just impressive t- to me just to know like I'm like these are my friends from my neighborhood and they're already um making like studio quality studio quality stuff and what were you doing at this time like I mean personally in terms of your I was more experience. of a I, I was more of a um I was just just trying to just sharpen my tools you know um I had a notepad that was full of raps um but I was like I'm not there yet you know what I'm saying I'm getting there but I'm like and then um I think I I kicked a rap for somebody. I can't remember. It was either Tajay or A plus, and they was like, "Yo, what you doing?" You know what I'm saying? And I was like, "Oh, I don't know." <laughs> it's like, man, jump on this track. I mean, um, I remember listening back to it, like, "Damn, that's how I sound." You know what I'm saying? Because like, I used yeah. to do little stuff. Like, I remember I had this this box, and I used to plug in the, uh, the headphone speaker. And uh, I mean, and just I figured out how to record into right. the headphones. And that was like the first time I really would like record myself. But I never thought in my wildest dreams to like play that for somebody like, yo, look, listen to this. It was just more so like, you know, I'm I was already a graffiti writer and I and I, I was a visual artist first. So I was doing I was drawing and doing graffiti and graffiti all the time. So it just felt like a natural progression to go from just having that pen in your hand already next thing you know you just you just you just write more words you start you know a tag is like one or two you know and then i just started expounding upon the words that i that i i got bored with just just tagging i guess you know so um so you're just in the lab just working on your craft working on your craft working on your craft and then you and then they ask you to ask you to jump on some shit now lyrically you know because in some interviews I've seen, you're like, you know, you talk about originality and, 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 and that's, that's what you were striving for. Like, you know, you're known for your shit being real complex, like fucking like way out there. So talk about like kind of what drove your lyrical style. I think it was, I think it was school, man, to be honest with you. I think, you know, I was in school and, um, I think that's when that that mental explosion started to happen. I started to read more. I was reading more books. I was talking to people who were older than me. Um, I remember my um, my older cousin. We used to have a lot of people living in our house that would just not all at one time, but in and out, type come, in and out. Yeah. So my mom would be like, "You could live with us for a couple months." Or you, you know what I'm saying? To my to my uncles and and cousins and all of that. You know, I remember one of my cousins. She she was graduating from college and um <clears throat> my mom let her and her who was her boyfriend at the time um move in and he was like an older cat and i just remember him just having long i had a lot of long conversations with him um after school and he would just be like man you got to do this like you know he would tell me stuff about because my my dad wasn't in my in my home so he was like you know i had a stepdad but he wasn't he wasn't in the home but he, I, I remember him being an older dude, like, yo, th- you know, you gotta, this is what you gotta do. You know what I'm saying? You gotta focus yourself on one thing, kind of like, you can't be like, I'm doing this and I'm doing that and I'm doing this and I'm doing that. If you got something that, if you, that you feel passionate about, go ahead and, and take some responsibility. And, and we had a long talk. I remember us having a long talk about responsibility. And that kind of, you know, just those little things, those little sparks, you know, you can't really like, quantify exactly what it is about it that makes you go into it. I mean, we're talking about 25 plus years ago. So, um, but a huge inspiration was like, I want to say my uncles and just the people that was coming in and out of the house at the time, you know, Uh, big up, big up to the OGs and uncles. I mean, anybody, I I feel you right there. Big up Tajay, DJ Newmark, everybody joining in on the show. Yeah. Um, like, Big up to the uh, my, same thing with my uncle. I was I was riding around with my uncle when I was when I was young. I was like ten. He was like seventeen, eighteen. He had the whip, like he he, he was he was playing like, you know what I'm saying? All playing all the all the old school shit. You know what I'm saying? So like, so no, nah, I feel you, man. So big up to the old. In Oakland, that, Oakland is that kind of place where like drunk. people are into, like people are into different stuff out here. You know what I'm saying? Like I might have one <laughs> uncle who's like. 
he's into the funk. He's slapping his, he's slapping the bass. You know, then I got another, my, I got another uncle that's like into rock. And I got another uncle that's into reggae. I got another uncle that's into jazz. And then my next door neighbor, who was like a couple years older than me, but was like a street dude, kind of was like into hip hop. And he would be like, you know, show me how to tie the, um, the, the wire hanger to the wall and make the signal go further so I could get capo in the radio stations and all that kind of stuff. So really putting cats on. That's what oh that's what that's what OGs are supposed to do. You know what I'm saying? Like that's what that's what the real meaning of it of it of it is. The real meaning of yeah. OGs is, you know what I'm saying, to put put cats on. You know what I mean? Exactly. Somebody say, yeah, how you know? <laughs> oh that's Taj. <Tajay. laughs> he said he said my uncle's name. So I was like, who who's that? <laughs> T yeah, Mass, what's up? Man? Yeah. So um yo, did you think the whole well actually no, before we get to this question, I want to go back because you you talked about uh being a, a graph writer. So digging it out because for us, uh, we celebrate each you still there? You good? Can you hear me? I'm here. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's yeah. it's breaking up a little bit, but I I'm here. All right. Um so for us at Carrying the Culture, we, we, we celebrate an element or a shout out an element each week. And uh, this week, well, actually, we got Graph coming up next week. So um, I used to write, you. I didn't know you wrote, but I was going to ask you if, you if you rocked with any of the other elements of, of, of hip hop. So um, how long did you write for? Were you out in the train? Like, how, how, what, was your, what, was, what was your Graph career like? I mean, it started real, it started early, like, um... I remember when I got to, I called myself a hip hop dude in elementary school. So I was, I was doing everything, break dancing, try to DJ a little bit. Um, probably the the least of them, the least of it was probably me rapping, but I was heavy in the break. I had all the Parkers with the fat laces and I had linoleum in my bedroom and you know, all of that. I was like fully on, fully on the hip hop thing. So I, I was, um, once I got to junior high, <clears throat> Really, really, I, I got to big up my Mexican partners because they were the ones that were just like super advanced with the, uh, I was like, damn, like, you drew that right now? Like, like they would come with like after class when class was out, I'm like, look, I just drew this. You just drew that during class? I'm like, and they just super inspired me to get better with um, characters and like, I wasn't really, I wasn't really tagging that much because I was, I was still young. I was still, you know under the under the reins of my my parents so i wasn't like out bombing or nothing like that but i was just like in the pad every day in the pad every day every single day and then uh once once i got a little older and i could go out on my own then i started getting into the into the more into the vandalism side of things but 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 keeping it on the art tip you ever get caught uh no Never got caught. Uh, you're lucky. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I stopped. I, I I I had the worst luck with that shit. I just I just I was always getting hemmed up for it, man. Like, so I had to just chill. I was facing like years. I'm like, I'm not going to jail for graffiti. Like, get the fuck out. Yeah, of here. yeah, and yeah. Then, like, I'm gonna go to jail. I'm gonna do some real fucking crime. Like, you know, right, what I mean? right. <laughs> like, like, so. Um, I mean, that's you know, one thing I used to be kind of jealous of a little bit about the East Coast is like, I used to be like, damn, look at those trains. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> like compared to our trains, it's like, it's just a whole different, you know, you've been on, you've seen Bark before. It just, it just moves different. You know what I'm saying? And yeah, it's not yeah. like stopping every, every, you know, yeah, it's, it's like a stop here and it's like seven miles that way. Right. Another stop, you know? Right, right, yeah. It's it's to it's totally different than just being like block to block to block to block to block to block. You know. What I'm yeah, saying? I mean, like, people just had to do the work on the bus pretty much out here, or 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 walls. You know. Yeah, yeah. Yo, they just hit um like, I think thirty trains over Thanksgiving in New York. Like, like in the in the they were in the in the yard. Like, it's crazy. They were like, it's, somebody was wow. like, it was like a flashback to the to that to the eighties. They, they hit like thirty trains. It's just, it's just wow. Impressive. For, and for, wow. for 2020, they said, because they said that the um, cop patrol is down because of, like, COVID and all this shit, so nobody's patrolling. Okay, anymore. okay. Oh, my goodness. So yeah, that's, a, out, like, that's, a, that's a dream right there. Yeah, that's a dream. 30 yeah, man. 
in, in um some some yard in in, in New York. So shit Man, is crazy. Like, like dude, Style Wars, Style Wars is like a that's you know, like I say, cult classic. I'm 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 in that cult right there. That's one I, that's one cult I'm in. Of course, of course. I mean style how can you not? I mean that's that's the that's the video law book. Of, you know exactly, of, of, exactly. Of, like that, that lays it out for you. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, like the the whole shit. Like they're talking when they're talking about cap and everything. Like the whole they, the whole culture is right there. You know what I mean? So absolutely. So, um, yo, I didn't really you know until maybe like five days ago that you did a lot of producing or did, did producing and or the, and and that casual. Um, was the Wait, one say that, that say you. that, say that again for the people in the back. Casual puts you on and and Festo. It's like, yo, do all you guys produce? Does as Opio? Opio produces. Yeah, Opio did a lot of the uh, Third Eye Vision stuff. That's right. And, yeah, uh, I mean, yeah, yeah. I've been seeing all your names. I was just, Opio just did question. Oakland Blackouts. You guys are fucking something else, yo. I always say there's no. Okay, so we're gonna get to this question. I always say there's no weak link in your crew. Like I, I've I've done memes on it. Like 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 when I look at your crew, I'm like, damn. Like, you know what I'm saying? And I've and I've said like, it's like, person to person, like, I, you're all the best crew to me. Like if like just like if if you going like man to man to man to man to man, Ooh, like that's saying a lot, bro. I mean, like, that's like, yeah. You listen, and, and I'm saying like if you going like head up straight up, like because I'm thinking like. <clears throat> You know, like who's taking out, who's taking out casual? Like who's taking, who's taking you out? Who's taking out Opio? Who's taking out Tajay? When he, who, like who's taking out that? Like I don't, I don't know. So I always say that. So I'm, I've asked Tajay, I've asked, and I asked A plus. All had both had different answers. Who's the best in the crew? How you gonna say that? I asked. They both answered. They both answered in different ways. I can say. I it's like a, um. This is I what I like. In our, our, I like in our crew to this. Um. Everybody has something that somebody else doesn't have, and it's not that they can't do it. It's just the individualistic aspect of it. It's like that's their thing. You know what I'm saying? And I think that's what makes everybody. That's what makes it a dope crew. You know what I'm saying? That because. I mean, we're 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 sculpted that way, you know what I mean? Like we, our personalities and our and our our rhyme styles are sculpted around being a crew. Some less, some may maybe less than others because some were, some were, um, you know, for solo artists from the very beginning, um, or maybe never in a group, you know, and, until we did the the group album. But <clears throat> it's not a um, it's not a definitely not a knock on any skill set they have you know what i'm saying um but yeah i like i like us to just like you know you got the army rangers then you got the then you got the you know the green berets then you got the you know what i'm saying and you got delta, the you got you got the special forces delta and, force and all that yeah. yeah delta force and then everybody does something different but it's like they all we all at the top of the top of our of our own mark that we set out for, you know what I'm saying? And nice. some some stuff is just more compatible to, to the ear, you know, <clears throat> like some of the more complex lyrical stuff is like people, some people love that. They're like, oh man, you're so complex. And then some people want to hear something that's a little more easy on the ears that just kind of like is more flow oriented or timing oriented or whatever, you know? So I just feel like we have across the board, you know? <clears throat> You would never hear me be like such and such is the best because that's even myself. Even I, I think I'm dope, but it's like I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't ne ever be like he's better than him because I've seen I've seen everybody at their peak, and it's not and they haven't dropped off. Right. So that's a nice way to weasel out of it. I, I'll let you, I'll let, <laughs> I knew I'll let, you were gonna say that. <laughs> I'll let you off the I'll let you off the hook because you're my man. But uh, so so that was that was an answer that uh, that that similar to Tajay's. He broke it down in terms of Tajay broke it down in terms of uh, he went through each of you guys and he was like, you know, who's fucking with 
with each of y'all and like broke down y'all's y'all styles. Yeah, he weaseled out of it too a little bit. A plus didn't weasel out of it though. What do you think A plus said? Oh man, well you know that's <clears throat> he's the master politician out of all of us. So that was a master political move right there. Sometimes you just have to just say like, you know, just just because he knew you were gonna he knew you were gonna do that after if he tried to weasel out of it. A plus didn't weasel out of it. I know. That's what I'm saying. He uh, that's, a, a, I know. a plus a plus and a plus answered, but but no, nah, it's, it's all good. So go go back to casual showing you the fucking like showing you the fucking boards and shit. The what? It, it, like I heard it isn't casual like fucking first show you how to like produce and make beats and shit. <clears throat> oh yeah, um, he was the first one to be like, all right, man, stop asking me about this EPS, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I was like, I'm gonna bring over some records. And then we, yeah, so it was, a, I think it was the EPS for sure. No, it definitely was the EPS. Definitely was the EPS. We sat down, Casual's dad used to have a studio. So now that I look back on that, I'm like, man, we didn't even really touch half the stuff in the studio just because it was off limits, but he was able to have his own little section right next to the real studio that had like all the guitars and drums and keyboards and organs yeah. and all that was right there. Yeah. <clears throat> so all of that inspiration was just pouring through the walls. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, I brought over a record. Um, it was like a Patrice Russian record or something like that. Something fairly easy to grab a loop from, you know, and we put it on the turntable and he's like, you catch it right here. And then you, you know, this is how you sequence it. You know what I'm saying? And then you put your drums on top of that. And then he had and all that this, casual voice. This, yeah, yeah, cause he used to have all all the discs laid around. So he'd be like, all right, let me, let me grab a drum disc. You know, as we got a little more into more producing, and that's when we started getting our own producer libraries. But I didn't have a producer library at the time. He let me use all his all his sounds. This is all we're talking about floppy discs here. We're not talking about, you know. Oh, get on the computer and, and, and sample this off of YouTube. And then the drum packs that Jay Diller used to use, you know, we're not talking about that. We're talking about like, oh, I've heard this break on this record and you chopped the break and you, oh, how much? We got seven more seconds of sampling time. You know, that whole thing. So manual. <laughs> Fully manual. 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 Fully manual. Shit. Yeah, no, of, of course. Of course. Yo, so did you think that, um, that the first album would do what it did and turn into what it turned into and just be this high road thing. Like, was that, cause, cause some groups say, yo, we planned for this shit. Like Wu-Tang was like, yo, Ray's like, yo, we planned all this shit out. Like, da -da 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 -da. we, this is what we wanted. This is where we were going. Boom, boom, boom. Like the other cats are <clears> like, glad. yo, I had no fucking idea. You know what I mean? I think one, I think one, um, I like having these conversations cause I like to remind people, um, I think people don't really realize when they look back at that time, they say like, okay, these are, the, these are your contemporaries. These are all the groups that came out at that time. And this is the golden era, quote unquote, sound and all that kind of stuff. And then they just think we're all, but if we came out at, the, at around the same time that we're all the same age, but I, I, I really don't think people can really realize how young we were. You know, we were, we were just really, I left, high school, I had to ask my principal at my high school if I could have two weeks off so we could go out and talk to the label. Um, and I remember him being like, follow your dreams, go ahead. You know what I'm saying? Like he was, he wasn't a, he wasn't a jerk. You know what I'm saying? He was like encouraging me. Um, and, and also like having to ask my parents, you know, I wasn't even 18 yet. So it was like, that's how young we were. Everybody else that came out at that time was much older. They probably had you know, it's a big, might think like, oh, it's only four years different. But when you're 17 to 21, that's a whole, oh. that's yeah. like um, a, a quantum leap. Of course. Yeah, yeah. 18, 18 to 14, or you're going your freshman year of high school versus leaving, getting ready to leave. It's a different, it's a total different thing. And you're, 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 you're right. Right, on, hit, hit it right on the head with that. Like, as far as right. like, it's a total different mindset. Totally different. And so I'm not saying that to say that that was like a disadvantage. I, I, I honestly think that was our advantage because we didn't know to be um, afraid of, or anything. You know what I'm saying? We were just like, yo, this is our calling. Like, you know what I'm saying? We're dope. This is our calling. And we, 
in our minds, we had found a chink in the armor of the average rapper. And to us, that was freestyling off the top, spontaneous. It wasn't many people doing that. We had battled, even before we came out, we battled so many dudes, you know what I'm saying? On just on free, I'm talking about freestyle battle, no written, nothing pre planned, nothing just right now, spontaneous, make it up, talk about what's on the wall, on the floor, what shoes somebody's wearing, all of that. We felt like we were the best at that at that time. Where Period. Did have, where did you have where did you have those ciphers at? Oh man, people's houses on the street corners, uh at uh, up at the schools, at parties. Um I mean it's it's so many stories. Tell tell me a story. That's why we're here. We need to hear the history. This shit the thing is with hip hop, so much of it is oral and he says, she said, you know, like Kumo D has cross eyes. That's yeah. why he wears glasses. Big Daddy can't have AIDS. So it's I'll like... tell you a pretty cool story. <laughs> um, a lot of people might not know this, but you know, we used to, us in the far side used to get lumped in together, right? Yes. Yeah. You know, rightfully so, because it was four members. They had four members, high, squeaky voices, and you know what I mean? Kind of a more playful yeah. style or whatever, yeah. rap, so on and so forth. So, um, we kind of would be on a lot of tours and shows with them and, and, and we knew them before they came out. They knew us before we came out. So we had, you know, we kind of had a little bond before we even, before everything jumped off. You know what I'm saying? It was a, it was a mutual respect factor there. Um, and we stayed, we went down to LA and we, we ended up staying with them for like, I want to say like two weeks. I'm talking about where we just, <clears throat> all we're doing is just, shooting craps and, and, and freestyling and, and, and just, you know, kids. We didn't have no any, any other obligation other than to make music. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. Um, and But we never came together to make music. We never even did, like, one song together. We would just be, like, sharpening each, sharpening each other's tools. You know what I'm saying? So, right. um, and then on top of that, we were kind of, we were, like, I feel like we, like, especially from Oakland, one of the first like bi-coastal groups, you know, because, and when I say bi-coastal, I mean like, obviously Too Short got signed by Jive, E-40 got signed by Jive, but that was a different fabric of hip, of hip hop at the time. <clears throat> they were, they were, that was like trap or whatever, not trap in, in terms of the music, but trap what they're talking about, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 like yeah. the Click was like one of those first groups. To, and we, by the time we went out there, people had already lumped LA and the Bay together. So we were kind of like on a mission to be like, not even the Bay, there was no Bay then. Nobody said the Bay in 93. You were from Oakland, San Francisco, Berkeley, you know, Vallejo, wherever you were from. There was no, there wasn't this overarching term, the Bay Area, unless you were talking to somebody who's like a traveler or something. They were like, oh, I'm going to the Bay Area. But that wasn't nothing in the and that wasn't nothing in hip hop until later on. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So, okay. so we went out there on some like we're from here. You know what I'm saying? And we have something we have kind of a chip on our shoulder. So we went out there on a mission. Just to just to like go everywhere. I mean, we got on stretching Bobito, obviously, which was like a big moment for us. Um and I remember uh Kenny Parker was there and um Matter of fact, that's where I saw Chino was on the show. The other day. That's where I met. That's where we met Chino. Chino came to the show, um, and this is like '92, I want to say. And that's where we met him at. A lot of a lot of cats used to be up there, up in up at Columbia University. Um, so we were like, I mean, if you just think about these teenagers from Oakland, and next thing you know, they're in a basement in New York City, have never been there before in their life, and couple weeks before that they're talking about Nas was here and and uh and and Lars Professor was here and, and Biggie was here and and you know none of those people were who they are as we know them in hip hop right now. They were all just rappers climbing up the up the ladder like right, 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 right. you know right. what I'm saying? Yeah 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 so, yeah. so wow. I just think about you know our our I'm trying to frame things for people because I think they just think like Souls of Mission, Nine Through Till Infinity, Hieroglyphics independent movement blah, blah blah but they don't really realize that the humble beginnings was like us as this we literally started as kids man literal kids like we can't Maybe. fathom we couldn't fathom like oh yeah we'll be in the game for 20 years 
right, right, you couldn't right, even right. think what you can picture 20 years ahead. That's like asking, ask, some of us have 16 year old, 17 year old children now, ask them where they'll be in 20 years. That's the same answer we would give. Right, of course. I mean, you know, like, you're, not, you're not thinking that far ahead. You're thinking like as far next day, maybe tops. <laughs> <You're not laughs> right. Thinking. Uh, right. Am, am I am I going to be at the same school next year? And you know, you're thinking about right, stuff like right, that. right, right. Of course, I feel you. Yo, how have you guys uh, managed, or should I should say, how have you managed to not break up? If that's grammatically correct. Uh, it, like uh, you know, because so many big groups have have broken up, bad terms, money, deals, credit, da 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 da. You know, what I'm saying royalties. This, I mean. You know, Riz is getting sued left and right. So, I mean, like, how have you guys just managed to not, you know, fall in those pitfalls? I think the answer is in the, is in the question. Because you said groups. And that's it. That's, 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 that's the difference. We're, not, we're a crew. That's why it says high road crew. Because we, we were friends. We were all friends. You know what I'm saying? We didn't. Like, we weren't like, hey, we're going to form this rap group and we're going to, I don't know you from, you know, oh, you had this deal on this label and then you coming over here and we're going to form this crew and all. We weren't like that. We were like literally friends who, you know, jumped people together, got jumped together, got, you know what I'm saying? Like, right. <laughs> watch one guy going to jail. Like, hey, man, call his mom. He, Yo, he went to jail. <laughs> you know? So we were just, like, our parents are like, you know, my friend's moms and grandmothers and all that kind of stuff are like, hello, Mrs. Carter, you know what I'm saying? Hello, right, right. hi, Miss Lindsay, you know. Right, right. Yeah, so so it's, it's like, it's, it's, it's a bunch of, it's a bunch of friends that formed a group, that formed a crew, <laughs> and just, we get, we, we haven't always got along. It's been bumps in the road. It's been fights. It's been, it's been arguments. It's been people leaving tours. It's been, um, you know, it's been uh, everything. I'm pretty sure all those other groups had to endure. We had to endure the same thing, but it's like we we always come back to center. I feel you. I feel you. Yo, how have you matured um, as a as an artist, as a person? Because it's funny, like the fan in me, you know, we're like we're like two years apart, but still, when I was, you know, young, like I saw niggas out there performing on BET and all that shit. So like, it's it's interesting seeing cats when, you know, I'm young as a fan and, and hearing the music and then meeting cats and rocking with them and seeing them grow, seeing like, seeing cats, thugged out cats like burning sage on their pages and stuff like, which is good. Like, you know, cats growing as, as people, you know what I'm saying? But like, it, it's just it's just interesting to see that. So how have you grown as a, as a, as a person? Cause you said you had, like, I saw you at, um, party in Oakland and you were like, yo, I gotta bounce. Like I, I got kids. Like I had kid my had my kids kinda late. Like I got a dip. Like this was like it was daylight out still. Yeah you know, man. What, how so, is how has it evolved for you from before to like, you know what I'm saying, where you are now in your life? Oh, that's definitely a huge evolution. Fatherhood. You know what I'm saying? Fatherhood, marriage, uh put the two together, you know. Um just getting older, just getting, just having it, having different experiences, not always positive experiences. Some of, some of them negative. I'm lucky to be alive. You know what I'm saying? Really be honest with you. Yeah, like man. I've been left, I've been left, left for dead, man. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, it's just like, you know, literally like woke up in the hospital, you know what I'm saying? And all my friends around me like, yo, you know what I mean? They got your car, you know, stuff like that. So I'm, I'm I've been, I've experienced the good, the bad. I haven't, I've been always able to, you know, be on the up and up, be honest with people that, you know, and I got, if it wasn't for my family, bro, I'm telling you, if it wasn't for my family, man, my moms and my grandmother and, and my sister and my brother and, and, and then my, my, you know, my extended family, my, my friends, Hiro, and so many other people who, who just, you know, you've been to Hiro day, you see all those people. I know all those people, you know what I mean? Like, I walk through High Road Day like these are all my friends. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Along that vendor line where all the vendors are, it's like, how you doing today? How you know? How how's it going? How you you know? Oh, I'm doing good. 
I'm having a real good day today, man. I sold this and, you know, I sold that. So like you said, going back to what Oakland was, like being a, being a small kind of community like that, um, you know, that's been, that's been very, very helpful. But, but yeah, I mean, I feel like parenthood, that's the ultimate growth experience for anybody. If you're a parent, if you, if you're a dedicated parent, you know what I'm saying? Like that's going to change, you know, Facts. <laughs> like right away, you snap right out and into into okay. This is first. This is second. You you it, everything is immediately prioritized for you. When before you might be like, I don't really know what's you know what's more significant than you know than the other. So definitely, mm-hmm. that's uh, that's that's number one. And then everything else <laughs> fall, falls behind that. And then that's that, that, that's easy. That's it, it's easy picking after. <laughs> Uh, how many? It's not an easy job. How old are your kids? Man, young, young. I got um, my four and seven. Four and you seven. In the be- you in the beginning. You in, I'm the, in the trenches. I'm in you the trenches. In the yeah. yeah, you in the trenches. Armor on. Yeah, you you getting busy right it's now. It's almost bedtime right now. I'm like, yeah, yeah it's yeah. almost like, um, okay, let's time to wind down. You yeah. Know. You focusing on like, yeah, it's a different, yeah, you're in a different space, yo, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, and it changes you, it definitely, definitely changes you. So, you know, no doubt, no doubt. So we got a, we got a few more minutes. I got some other questions for you. Um, yo, what's the um, best year in hip hop for you? Man, I, 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 dang, it's tough, man, it's tough. It's between you talking about just from my personal experience or or musically. What's the what you mean? That's the difference. I mean, like, like, what you mean? like I'm saying, like, what are you talking about? Like, these are the dope records that came out that year. Because some people want to know, like, what's your favorite year oh, as far as like the material that shit, was released like that personal, year? Personal shit you went through. No, I'm saying best music, like the best music. That was out that like like that was yeah eighty eight was one for me too but yeah that's the best the best um yeah the best music ooh like just in terms of just bangers like all like where where it just set the tone for the year I just get with this I go back to the summer the summer of eighty eight summer summer of eighty eight because it's um where I was in my life too at that time like I was um this is this is from transition from uh, middle school to high school. So that's when you really start, you, you like, you're getting a little more freedom. You know, I'm able to go over to my cousin's house and, and, and hang out with them a little longer now and even spend the night and, 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 and everybody is coming through and it's a hot summer and, and, it's, and it's like, here, here goes, here, this, that's the mixtape. That's when I think about mixtapes, I think about summer of 88. Everybody had a mixtape, and everybody was like, "I mean, it was everything on there." Like, I remember I had one with like, it was just crazy, like the the dynamic, the you know, the dynamics. Like, it was like potholes in my lawn. Uh, I ain't no joke. I mean, my melody, um, and just like, I mean, um, uh, what Public Enemy? Um, I mean, it was just like. I want to say even EPMD, like there was some EPMD in there. It was like, all right, let's go. The new came. I, I pulled it up. I pulled it up. All right, check it out. Eighty eight. Check out eighty eight. Biz Markey going on. Bit, oh my god! I don't know how I didn't say him. Jazzy Jeff from <clears throat> Prince. He's a DJ. I'm the rapper, which I still I I think that was a good album. Oh man, sure. that was a great album. What? BDP by all means necessary. I'm na- I'm not naming everything. I'm naming the dope. I'm shit. glad I got the year right. Let me let me say that. I'm so I'm glad I didn't say '87. I was getting ready to say '87, but Run DMC, Tougher Than Leather, um, Dougie Fresh to Get Fresh Crew, World's Greatest Entertainer, Audio Two. No, when I've said right there. I mean, you can yeah. hit a beat in your head right now. You hit, you hit a beat in the head right, right, right. Now. And this is ninth grade, so I'm like, I'm coming out of, I'm coming from that summer into ninth grade. I'm I coming to a new that. school. I'm like. You know what I mean? We was rocking the silk shirts and the. Uh... <laughs> uh, I was I was I was in middle school. I was a fresh was seventh grade. EPMD strictly business. Yep, I know. Yeah, I knew it was EPMD. Yep, Big Daddy came. Long live the came. Yep. 
Public Enemy takes the nation to millions. Of course. Um, Eric Ben Rock and Follow the Leader. Um, Straight out of Compton. Sir Mix a Lot. Prosy on Broadway mm-hmm. was fucking ill, so I don't care what nobody says. Um, Ice T Power. MC Light Light is a rock. Steady B. I can Why tell you, so I can tell you the first time I heard some of those songs. Like I can tell you the exact scene. Me too. Me too. The exact Mark. scene. Like the first time I heard, yes, the rhythm, the rebel, without a pause, a mo. And my, the first time I heard that, I remember the first. I was on a, uh, on a bus, and we was like, we was taking a uh, trip up, you know, California. Got everything. They got, we got the, we got the beach, we got the mountains. So we're going up on a ski trip, but it's like a black ski club. So it's all it's all of us on the on the bus together, girls. You know, <laughs> you know we we getting ready to have a good time. And one of the older cats was like, "Man, y'all ain't heard this." Threw on, yes, the rhythm in the whole bus is like the rhythm, the rebel. And I'm like, "What's this?" And I just remember that horn. Oh man, that Dizzy Gillespie uh, sample. Yeah, I, I, I I'm there right now. Like that's how. That's how important that song is to me and that time is for me. Summer of 88. Yeah. I mean, keep, let's keep going. MC Light, Light is a Rock, um, came out that year. Um, Ultra Magnetic MC's Critical Beatdown. Stop. Ah. Marley Mall in, in Control, Volume 1. Uh, MC Shan. Slick Rick came out that year. Greatest, <laughs> greatest. So you got teenage love. You got you got. I mean, you got. Yeah, I got children's okay. story. Come on, lick the balls. Uh, Jungle know. Brothers, Jungle Brothers, straight out the jungle came out. King T, act the fool came out. Lock him, Shabazz, pure righteousness came out. Easy E, easy does it came out. You could have uh, stopped that biz because that was that. I stopped oh, last one three last one three times. Dope, big up my Philly niggas. Three times dope. Yeah. Uh, big up definitely. PSP. Oh no, yeah. that was that was that was getting played out here like any of the records that you just said. Chub Rock, mad shit. Super Lover C casting over Rudd. Oh Mix. yes. Eighty eight yes. girls I got unlocked. Yes. It up. Da-da, da-da. Come on, man. I mean, so this is this is a door. This is a door. I'm walking through this door right now as you as you say all these songs, and I realize, man, you know how grateful I am to be in that time in that place. Like it's no souls of mischief, it's no hieroglyphics if it's not for summer of eighty eight, bro. It's not. That's like that's laying the foundation right there. Rodney O, Joe Cooley. <clears throat> I mean, um JBC Force, seven eight three back when Muggs was with, with back, you know what I'm saying? Fucking MC Shy D. Oh, like, we's not we was knocking Shy D too. I mean, come on, man. Ghetto boys had an album out that made like 88, and I always just say, yo, we were lucky, man. I mean, like, we just born, happened to be born when we were born, and so, but, like, that was a special time, man. But here's what I was thinking about 88, and here's why I think it's the best year, because I was thinking, you still, it was still very organic, mm-hmm. but the talent was off the charts. Like, it, it, it was still in its infancy, kind of, like, it was coming out of that Houdini, run the MC shit into some... <laughs> right. And, 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 and so talent was off the charts, but it was still very organic. Cats were still doing shit in the park. You know, Cats wasn't getting paid a lot. It was still, like, it was still growing. And, and you know what I'm saying? It, but the talent was on another level, and the shit that came right. out, as you just can tell, is like, come on, man. Like, my goodness. Was like, was um, was um uh, was Nucleus out that year? They came I out I think nu- Nucleus might have came out earlier than that. No, they were, like, 84. Nucle- okay, okay. Jam on it was like 80, 84. Damn. Nucleus was like 84. Because I, I was that, trying, because what I was thinking, what I was, my, it, my what made was me think kid. about it is um, 88, like by that time, at least in Oakland, break dancing was like, that was like a, it had passed. You know what I'm saying? So now it was like everybody who was like a, a break dancer or like they might have been a break dancer all the way up to this point. Up to like eighty seven, then by that by that by that time it was like everybody was like you, it was still cool to dance. Don't get me wrong, but it wasn't break dancing. It was like you know the the the, the scoop and scraps and the and that kind of more of that kind of style of dance. You know what I mean? But all of those elements were fully still, I think, still blossoming. You know whether it was turntablism, the, the DJ aspect of it, 
course. Um, you know, stylistically with rap, you still had a new rapper coming out with a new style that hadn't been done yet or a new, like they were comparing stuff that like we look back now on it and we like, how are y'all even comparing that? Like they don't even sound like, but people were like, oh, they sound like, but now that you look back on it now, you're like, that was worlds <laughs> apart. Right. How, you, how did you make that connection? Right, right. Because no. it was just so much, so much stuff coming out, man. And I'm just, I'm, I'm grateful to have witnessed that time for sure. Right. And actually, yo, big up, Tajay, you know what I'm saying? Spitting the knowledge, Buddha Strats, Fendi, Soul Brothers, my top crew, you know what I'm saying? At, out of New York City, Misfits, you know what I'm saying? Yes. Like, and then, I, yeah, definitely on the West Coast, Soul Brothers, Matt, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, it was, it was, Steezo, rest in peace. Steezo, Steezo. rest in peace. Connecticut, all Rest day. in peace. I got a Steezo yeah, story man. for you. Got a Steezo story for oh, you. Right. What up, what up, Great what up, Steezo up. story, man. So, oh, word. yeah, so, um, you know, the first time we went on tour was with A Tribe Called Quest and De La Soul. And um, so this is our first time going to uh, Connecticut. We didn't know anything about Connecticut, man. Uh, we didn't know. Uh, we, didn't know and we didn't know anything. And then... Um, as a matter of fact, I thought Steezo was from just from uh, Long Island because he was down with EPMD. So I thought, right. you know, and um, so we come off, come off stage. We, we were obviously opening up um, Tribe and Daylight. We were getting ready to transition to uh, to Daylight. It used to be like us, we go on, then Daylight and Tribe. So we transitioning from us to Daylight. And as we come off, we like is that Steezo? He was like, yo, souls of mischief. You know what I'm saying? Are we like, like this is a hip hop moment for us. You know what I'm saying? Because we, we, we didn't know. We, didn't, we just didn't know. We were just like, hey, you heard of us? You know what I'm saying? Like kind of flipped out. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, it was just like, it felt like this club. You know what I mean? It just felt like this, this exclusive club that you were, that you were, a part of now, you know what I'm saying? And so Steezo is definitely one of the people that when I think of like affirmed us, it was like, wow. yo, cause we are big, big fans of Steezo, man. Rest in peace. Wow. Yeah. yo. Yeah, and that's my, that's my memory. When I think of Connecticut and I think of uh, New Haven, I, I think that's, that's who I think of. Yo, that's like, that's like, that's yo. my, that's my New Haven memory is the, is meeting Steezo on the side of the stage. And being like, yo, when he, matter of fact, when he passed, that's that's exactly where my where my mind went. Damn, yo, you just fucked my whole head up, yo. Because I'm saying, like, Steezo was my man, you know what I'm saying? And he 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 was my barber for for like two years, like that. And that's my man Dulio's cousin. Like, you, I don't know if you met Dulio. Like, if you was out, you probably ain't chill out there. But like, like, so like, New Haven, yo, that's that's my hood, yo. Like, that's so so for me, it's like, yeah. It's, it's, you know, you man, both, we I, met, man, we met, we, we, we were out there, man. So we were, we were meeting everybody, man. Like you, so we you spent a lot of time with, um, with Curious George when on the East coast, you know, like I would, I, I stayed at Curious's house for like a whole summer and a little bit in, in, in winter. And, and it used to, and a lot of people used to come through Curious's Curious had like an open door kind of thing going on where like, you know, Mike G from the jungle brothers would be there or, or, um, <clears throat> you know, sub rock or, or, Sadat so X or just like all these people would come through um, and, and, he, and then he would take us around and meet people too. So we would go to like, you know, we would go up to the Bronx and I remember the first time I met Rock Raider and uh, and, and uh, cool DJ Red Alert and um, Biggie, George introduced me to Biggie and, and like, I mean, so many people, man, because we, we used to be at the tunnel. The Chris tunnel? Lighty. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, uh, yeah, cause, cause Chris Lighty who was, um, we knew him because we were on tour with Tribe, obviously, and we label mates. Right. So those were like our big brothers, man. So, um, he, you know, he was, you know, he was involved with the tone and we're not even 21 yet. You know, we could walk in there. I'm walking, I'm walking in there with like a half pint of Hennessy in my pocket and just, you know, like, yeah. we, I mean, we were wild and like back then. So it was like, we walk in and, and, It'd be like we flip out because it'd be like, oh, Q Tip is right there, and then Q Tip introduced me to Biz, and then there goes LL right there, and then the whole Woo is back over there, and then like you just see like Mike Tyson, you know, it's, it's crazy. It was just crazy. Um, 
And we were just we were just soaking it all in, man. Soaking it all in. One of the first shows I went to was at the Muse out there. Um and we went to go see uh it was brand Nubian and X Clan at the Muse. Um and I think it was just me, maybe just me and Opio and um shout out Sophia Chang. Sophia Chang took us over there. Oh she sure. was our she was our A and R. She would oh, take us around to all the spots and and we went and then man, they were like, Man, you don't know where you at right now. <laughs> you walk through like the magnometer, you know what I'm saying? You get, they got the full airport taking off all your shoes, you know, they opening up your mouth, checking, see if you got razors in there. Crazy experiences, man. Are we like eighteen years old, seventeen, eighteen years old? Yeah. But big shout out. I always got to shout out George, man. That's because George was like, he was like the guide. He took us everywhere, man. And, and it's a lot of other people too. But, but um, well, yeah, big up, yeah, big, us up, to up big up, curious George, CM Mark, you kept you know what I'm saying. So, before we get on out of here, I know you're a big sports head. You know what I'm saying? So, I, I yes, sir. You, I'm gonna ask you like. Jordan Lebron like debate issue. What's the what's where you at on on this whole thing right now? I, I feel, I feel Come like on, you're man. A, I'm from before before you go before you say. I feel like you're a level headed dude. And I feel like you will, will answer with some with some 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 uh, common sense. Let's see. First of all, I'm from the '80s. Okay, so I'm an '80s person through and through. I understand. I'm right okay. there with you. I'm right there with you. The debate that I see online is the level of competition. That's what I see a lot of people hanging their hat on. I see little, you know, nobody really wants to come out and say it, right, Jordan is, I mean, uh, uh, LeBron is better than Jordan. I haven't really seen somebody just come straight out and say that, but I see little Jordan slights here and there. Like, look at the people he played against. Look at this guy's tight shorts. And, uh, you know, they just say little, little slick things, you know? And I'm like, stop it. Cut it out right now. Six for six in the finals. I mean, that's the conversation should end right there. The man is six for six in the finals. We got, is it three and three and seven or four and seven now? Are we counting this year? Let me say, are we, are we, we we're going to count this year as a ring, four and seven. I count this year. We got a minute and 56 seconds left. left. But this, the, this, quick, yeah. the, the, the short answer is. Year. I, I count this year. The short answer is Jordan is a better um, better defender. I'll, I'll, I'll break it down into each section, okay? Jordan's right. a better scorer, yeah, better shooter, defense. better defender, um, better free throw shooter, um, and not as turnover prone. LeBron James is a better passer and a better, I would say, maybe all around player in terms of like getting his teammates involved, but he does not have that. He's not that dog like Jordan. He's not Jordan, is a, Jordan is a killer. He's not Jordan, the dog. Jordan is a I, killer. I think, I personally think LeBron is the most skilled player, like complete skilled player. Like personally, like years, 17 years in the game and fucking still and, and did what he did. I mean, I, I'm I'm trying to look at the big picture. I think he's personally like the most skilled player, but he's not the he's not the alpha super super dog. So I'm, I'm a Jordan guy. I got it. Yo, thank you very much. I knew Let's I liked go. you for a reason. <laughs> huh? I knew I liked oh. you for a reason. I knew oh, you. Come were... on, man. It is what it is. I mean, I, but 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 I but I but I'm trying to look at the big picture. So I got 30 seconds left. I don't want to lose the show. Thank you very much, Festo. I'll tag man, you. Thanks for time. having me, man. Hyro, we're gonna do it again. Yeah, we'll Thank do it you, again. Everybody. We'll do it again. This is part one. This is part of one. Of course. Be good, yeah. baby. All Thank right. You. Peace. Peace. Hyro.